Hard Rockology show, Chris and Matt, brand new music from Raven Eye off their Breaking Out EP. The song is called Breaking Out, and I want to welcome to the show Ollie Brown. Ollie, thanks for taking time to talk to Hard Rockology. No worries, man. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, Ollie, you just had a chance to wrap up a tour here in the States and also in Europe as well, opening up for Slash. So what was that like for you? I mean, considering that the EP just came out earlier this year and the band pretty much just formed late last year. So what was that like opening up for Slash and getting that opportunity so soon? It was incredible. I, we didn't really expect it to kind of go like this far. You know, I didn't expect to be talking to you guys and doing this radio thing. It's been a bit of a whirlwind year for us. Because originally the EP was just to get out there so we could actually have our, our local pubs back in England bookers so you know it's like oh here's our music here's what we sound like do you want us to play at your pub and all of a sudden now we're doing these tours and it's been yeah it's been amazing for his slash his band are such lovely people and his whole crew couldn't have looked after us better and you know it's, it's very lucky as a support band really when you're just there to just warm people up you know there's no you know they're doing us a favor and they just looked after us so well so it was yeah it was unbelievable i had such a good time I mean, if you look at it, I mean, especially in today's music scene, which is a lot different than it used to be, to have an artist like Slash actually hear one of your tracks, and I'm assuming, I think it was Breaking Out that he actually heard, and saying, you know what, mm-hmm. I like this band, I want these guys to open up for us. I mean, that's kind of old school, and you have to say thanks to Slash, because that's exactly what I think a lot of the bands need nowadays, is the old guard to step up and basically say, hey, here's some new bands up and coming, and they're touring with us. So, I mean, like I said, congratulations. For the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, it, it is it is incredible. Yeah, I think like, having Slash actually pick us and actually give us the opportunity, and he knows how much help offers. You know, that he knows what pulls he has and how much a difference his crowd will make to our future as well. And it really is a, a huge game changer for our careers as musicians. And it's yeah, it's an incredible incredible opportunity. Now, for our listeners out there, if you're not familiar with Oli Brown. Ollie Brown, excuse me. I mean, you actually have a, a rather extensive, your your background, you have three previous album releases, but you focused more on the blues style of uh, music. And I've had a chance to go back and listen to some of those albums. And there's a couple tracks here and there that have a little rockier, hard rock sound to it, which is very similar to what you're currently doing with Raven Eye. I mean, can you go ahead and just let the listeners know exactly? I mean, you went from playing blues music to pretty much a hard rock blues style band. So how did that come together? I mean, was that something that you just needed to do? Yeah, pretty much. Because so I, I, I got signed when I was 18 and I, I had my first album out then. And I toured a lot, extens- I toured all the time doing blues music and kept on releasing um, albums through that product. And I, I loved it, I enjoyed it. And I, I moved over to Toronto for a couple of years and kept on pushing that scene. And eventually I had a little room uh, when I was in Toronto, I had a little room which had a drum kit and a bass sound and guitars. And I just started recording my own demos uh, without other musicians, without anyone else's ideas involved. And from there, I just started writing heavier music. And I've always, I think you mentioned it as well, I, I always touched on heavier sounds, but I couldn't fully commit to that sound because it would just, you know, it's not blues and it wouldn't really work for the crowds that I was pulling. It would be kind of disrespectful to all of a sudden just change my music entirely and say, all right, now I'm playing this style. And I, from there, I just started pushing further into that and realized, I wanted to try something new and from when I was 18 like I had a lot of help from my parents and um, management that helped really develop me through the start of it so I didn't have the full understanding and didn't really get a chance to really home grow my own project and that's where Raven and I really came into it where I had the songs that were heavy enough that I felt suited and also felt I learned enough at that point to really get into something by myself so I kind of did like an etch sketch from my career and started again but wanted to do it alone, wanted to start this band from scratch and call everyone up myself. And I you know, I remember the first first gigs that I tried to book for the band, like, I sent hundreds of emails out to people, all individually written, and maybe, you know, 5% of them ever got back to me about booking these shows. And I loved it. I loved that hard grind, that one. You know, we're, we're all hard workers in this band, and it's, it's wicked to have that hard grind. And, you know, the, the three of us, did this tour just by itself so we drove all over America in this 12 passenger van which is three of us and it was yeah, an incredible experience that I wouldn't have been able to do any other way and I, I just love hard rock it's always been in me since I grew up as well like, I was a huge Soundgarden fan I originally Audio Slave then I found love with Chris Cornell's music and found Soundgarden and still now Super Unknown is <laughs> constantly on my playlist 
Well, I was gonna I was gonna mention that uh, the voice your voice does sound similar to Chris Cornell of Soundgarden, but you know I mean you can hear the similarities right there. Well, well I mean it, it prob- maybe it comes across because I mean I listen to him, but like I mean his voice I, I actually love his voice. It's, it's it's a wicked thing to hear. <laughs> so I appreciate that because he's a huge hero of mine. So you you guys were in a, a van touring the U.S. So what was your thoughts on the U.S.? I mean, what were some of the highlights and I got to ask lowlights too, even though you're on tour with Slash. So I mean, really, what could be bad about that? <laughs> I mean, the highlights were the gig. The, the cool thing with those that Slash crowd is that they're up here in the music too. So we got incredibly welcomed, like at every show. You know, as a wall, I actually don't know what to expect from a crowd, and they don't really know what to expect from you because they never heard heard of you. So we're kind of like, and I think someone even told me, I was like, man, when, before you guys came on, I was like, when can the opener act just be finished? Because I'd really can't be bothered to see you guys. And then, you know, you played, and then I was like, oh, I kind of didn't want you guys to do the stage, which is cool to have that. People that also kind of weren't up for hearing us, but eventually we convert them, which is wicked. And so the crowds are fun. Like, we're obnoxious and in your face, so we like it. People are that, like, rowdy back at us, and American audiences definitely are that, which I loved. But, yeah, I mean, we got lucky because, the three of us, we have a good time pretty much through the worst of times. So we don't have huge downers. The only things that we, the only things that we did get, we had five shows in a row, and just the three of us driving, like six hour drive in the morning, get us like all the hotel drives, some of the late night drives. Like actually, after the Hollywood Palladium show, we played. We kind of we finally left the venue at two a.m. to then drive to uh, AfterShock Festival, which is <laughs> on the same day. So we finally pulled in the festival at eight a.m and had a gig to play at 11.50 and load in. And I think we're all pretty like, are we awake enough for this? And then eventually I think the adrenaline kicks in, like five minutes before the stage, but everyone's panicking because they're like, oh, we're going to be too tired. But <laughs> thankfully not. But definitely the drives were the, the biggest learning curve for us. Cause a 20-hour drive was yeah, quite a few of the journeys we had, but that's like a full circle around England, maybe a couple of circles <laughs> around England. Exactly. We're talking with Ollie Brown, lead vocalist, guitar player for Brand New... I'm going to say blues rock band, hard rock band, Reeve and I. Now, Ollie, I have to ask you because you're a three piece band. You got Aaron and you got Keeve, okay? And I got to ask you about Keeve. Were you just sitting at home one day just watching YouTube and you, and you come across his drum, drum videos on YouTube? I mean, how exactly did you guys get together? Because I know he was putting out those YouTube uh, videos where he was doing covers and stuff. Was that primarily how you found him or was there something else involved there? Yeah, it, it was kind of weird because I, I was, it was literally the day I was looking for the drummer. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do um, with this EP and put it together. And I, I don't really tend to, to read Facebook because I kind of get, I got sick of myself scrolling through the walls and just reading nothing. And I was like, hey, I'm not going to do it anymore. And then I just opened Facebook and his post, Kev's post, was a Radiohead drum cover. And I just checked it out, just out of the blue. I was like, oh, why not? I'll just see what he's playing. Because I've crossed paths with Kev before through just playing the same festivals in England, excuse me, in, in England. And I checked him out and I was like, this is exactly the drummer that I'm looking for. Uh, <laughs> like, it was the laziest search for a new drummer I could have ever <laughs> done, but I, I, he was the perfect guy. And I got in touch with Kev and talked about getting some songs together and just to meet up to see if you know we had a good connection in person. So I flew back to the UK and lived with him for a bit. And then I just, I stayed there and he recommended Aaron Spears and we all hung out it was on my birthday actually which was a great day to hang out because we were all drinking <laughs> had a wicked night together and got along and from there it, it just kind of started wrapping itself together and everyone we all just worked hard as individuals previously we've all had our own careers up till then so we all know what it's like to grind and you know work hard because the music industry can be unforgiving no one gives you a combination at all. You do the gig, and so you've got to work. You know, you work twenty four hours, and they all had workers, and it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that's one thing I have to ask. I, I do have to ask this. Keeve fits the part as a, as a hard rock drummer. He's got the look and everything. And and I know Aaron came from Australia, and he had his jazz blues band going on there. I mean, now you could tell him after I say this because I've watched some of those those videos when he was in Australia with his band and all that if you would have watched those videos first would he have been in, like your first choice for your bass player I mean because he's got a <laughs> drastically different look going on there so what happened there I mean I was watching some of his videos when he was in Australia with his uh, jazz blues band I'm like this can't be the same guy so what happened there <laughs> <laughs> yeah honestly it, it's crazy I've got 
you release another jazz album actually and I, I listen to it and it's cool because when we do like because we play the blues stuff as well and we do some covers gigs too like when he goes for it that's the cool thing he's the dark horse you know you see him do the rock stuff you know he's like oh he's a good rock bass player but when you hear him do his jazz stuff you hear a, a virtuoso like the guy's a monster bass player and but he just loves to rock like his favorite band like when we were talking first thing out we both kind of both can relate upon each other because of our love for Soundgarden and he loves that kind of bass playing and he just loves delving into that different kind of project and it's it is surreal like hearing his jazz stuff because it is mind blowing but he he just loves rock too and it's kind of it's more drastic than me like, I love blues but I also love playing rock but like he loves jazz he also just is obsessed with rock music and that's kind of more of his main thing but he definitely you know he's definitely a Jack of Pistorius weather report guy as well he loves that stuff now, I will say this, because I, I did read some previous interviews where you had mentioned your reasoning for forming Raven Eye, which was, yeah, you're you're known as a blues artist, and you didn't want to sit there and shock the fans and all of a sudden turn into this hard rock, blues-type band. So, I mean, it, it's refreshing to hear a solo artist say, you know what, let's form a band, and let's be a hard rock band, because I think you made the comment that most of the hard rock bands and hard rock that you listened to were bands, they weren't solo artists. So would you mm-hmm. say that's pretty much the way it is? Yeah, it's cool. It's cool as well. Like the response from audiences has been very different towards than just being the solo artist as well. Like everyone gets into the ideology of just the three of us. Like it's not just me anymore. No one's, no one just cares just about me. They everyone sees Raven Eye as Aaron, Kevin, Ollie, and I love that. I love that idea. The identity of the band is the three of us. Where as a solo artist, I always try to make my band also part of the Ollie Brown identity. But it's never it's never going to happen because my name is still forefront of it so it is a very different thing where it's great like the camaraderie just between the three of us everyone cares about this project as much as everyone else like where as you, if you have hired guys as ollie brown people will care you know they'll care to a certain point because obviously they do want to play well want to represent well but there's always that boundary because it's still session mentality versus this is a band if anyone sucks they're doing everyone just you know they're doing everyone uh you know a problem, giving everyone a problem to worry about. So everyone really works hard at this band, and you know we're, we're very lucky. You know, to, to be in a top passenger band for the amount of drive that we have to still be friends with each other is, is a lot for us. And you know, we're all we're all really tough, proud of each other to kind of get through it and keep in good spirits at all. And we're, yeah, we're a wicked team. Ali, I take it you're a big fan of Ravens. That's where the name of the band came from, <laughs> somewhat, right? Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, well, I grew up I, as a kid. Like I grew up. With but I had telescopes, binoculars, I, would, I had birds painted all over my room as well. I just, I, I love them. Uh, I still, you know, like, it's still, it's still fascinating me. So everywhere we go, I'm always looking at the local birds. Um, natural birds, women too, I guess. <laughs> More so just um, birds. And ravens were the ones that I always had a fascination with. They're incredibly intelligent. They're, you know, macabre, macabre animals as well. There's something dark about them. But they, they also... Uh, cool little factoid there um, to tell the difference between a raven and a crow crows call the ravens actually they rock they get rocked uh, you know <laughs> so a little convenient thing that came into play but also Edgar Allan Poe's the raven like I'm, I'm a fan of Edgar Allan Poe I have a massive book of all his poems and to try and understand them like you, you know I could spend a day trying to get through one of them even just one of his poems to get inside it and I'm a uh, big fan of him but I just kind of wanted something that's also neutral as well. That doesn't, you know, doesn't make it too scary. You know, we're not trying to be a scary band of like some, you know, death, death eye or something. I don't know. <laughs> but we wanted something that invites everyone and it's a bit universal. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I love every kind of Raven paraphernalia. I think someone just recently gave us a, this like toy Raven, so we had it on these interviews and just had it with us. And sadly, I think it's real feathers, so we can't fly with it. So we had to leave it, which is completely heartbreaking. <laughs> I do, I do like uh, the logo, with, but it says Raven Eye. And uh, tell me a little bit about the band logo, because I never ask bands about their logo and and, uh, and and who came up with the idea for the logo. I mean, it does say Raven Eye, but you have like a little symbol on like in, on your merch section on your website. It, it kind of reminds me of like the Robert Plant symbol on the uh, Four Symbols album. Yes, yeah, that's it. Like, and that's what I was kind of speaking to the designer with. I, I, I do a lot of our artwork but I'm not good at creating something new I can work with artwork they're already given so speaking to the guy about it and talking about the influences like Zeppelin that do you know help lead the band and some of the sounds as well because you know well, we're all big Zeppelin fans and grew up in that that kind of style like my dad always played it 
And then I just really wanted something simple that didn't really say too much that we could you know, stick in everything. Like, I really think branding is important. And for it. Now we have a band name. It's easy. Like, when I tried to make logos for Ollie Brown, it's like, how do you make a logo for your own name? And, and, you know, some people, you know, can do it. But with the Raven, I think I really wanted to explore just the simplest design, something really simple that we could put on everything that, you know, says where we are and where we can do a lot with it. And it's it's been a, it, it was a cool process to go through because you sent so many different designs and we tried different styles of feathers and everything to go through and it's such a hard thing to decide on because it's like well this is what it's going to be you know and you do see companies do change the logos but we really want something that sticks and we've actually had a fan that's got it tattooed in their arm which is the coolest thing to see uh, it's so we could see the little uh, feather on that person's arm we were stoked on uh, yeah, she surprises with it well the, yeah it <laughs> is it, it, it is pretty cool i mean to say the least but like you just said it's, it's very very simple but i mean I recognize it right away now. That's wicked. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. We wanted something that, and it's so hard to get something that has an identity now. Like, there's so many different styles of you know, band sounds and, you know, logos and everything that kind of start to look all the same and trying to get some of the individuality out. And it was hard to try and find something that, that works. And when you even look at it, it's like, is it too simple? Does it say enough? But, I mean, we're really happy with it. And it, you know, we, it is hard. Like, I think the fact that me is always like should we try something new now like I think you know a, a musician trying to finish any song is impossible because you still want to keep on adding new things to it all the time <laughs> same with the logo well, also on the merch section there's a there's a there's a thing saying who the flock so tell me really quick <laughs> about that too <laughs> yeah well, cause just because we're nobody's we're nobody's band and like, we want to put ourselves in like a flock of birds is a quite a common term and we don't want to we kind of want still people to be able to buy these badges and you know, even kids can buy it and it's still a play on words, but who the flock is, Raven and I, kind of a play on the old, uh, the birds. <laughs> All right, uh, Ollie, I mean, you have Breaking Out, which clearly is a song about you breaking out from your blues style music into a harder type of sound. Is there a, another track on the on the uh, five track EP that really resonates with you that uh, is a special song for you? Yeah, I mean, it's something that, more so because of the live impact we've had with it, um, is a song called Hey Hey Yeah on the EP and We've been playing that live a lot at the moment. Oh, we play it live all the time, but like the audience just get into it. It's kind of a party song, and you know we're not just a party band. Like we want those fine lines where like, breaking out is quite a, an emotionally personal song, where it's about my own, like personal restraints and trying to get out of my own head and you know believe in what I do and push myself in what I do. But we also want those songs that you know someone doesn't have to pull apart and really understand and think there's some deep meaning to where. You know, hey, yeah, it's just about having a good time and sometimes not really caring about, you know, what you do or what you don't do. And <laughs> sometimes those are where all the good nights happen. And also some of the worst nights happen too. <laughs> but that's what that song is about. And the audience just, it just seems to resonate between us and the audience. When you get that riff starting out, it just, it feels good and it feels good to play. And we, we get everyone singing along with it and get everyone going, hey, hey, yeah. And it makes it a lot of fun on this tour. It's definitely been one of our favorite, I think, yeah, we've had a wicked time in that tune. Now, being that uh, most, if not all, of the five tracks in this album were, were compositions that you wrote, uh, being that you guys have been together now, playing on the road now, have you guys had a chance to sit down, the three of you, and start writing some new music, or or what's the next step for you guys? Are you guys going to just run the course here on this EP, or are you thinking about maybe going back into the studio and uh, laying down some more tracks and maybe putting out a full length? Yeah, we we write all the time. I'm, I'm a stickler for writing. I, I do believe that the more you write, the better the songs get. So we've got a good good two dozen songs written, ready to go, that we're still deciding upon. Because I really just want to write as many tunes as possible and then just kind of pull it down and really get the strongest songs out. And sometimes, like, uh, there's a song on the EP called You Got It, but actually it's two completely different songs that I wrote and then I just eventually put together and it just changed the key to make them work. But that's what, how that song came about. And I do think that that will happen with a couple of the other songs that are writing at the moment but when we get back we've booked in a few different studios to record in we want to try different mixes and just different styles of approach for the, art, the album to decide how we want to put it out because I like the album idea but I also like the idea of bringing out another EP and offering something that we can bring out sooner but then also means we can record again sooner because I feel like now an album has a lifeline where you've got to make sure you, you, know, you let it run its course for a year and a half before you record something again and I really like that idea of being at something, you know, every six months, and because we have so much material, and we we kind of want to get a, a gig out there because we tour a lot, and right now we have our own full shows, but people can't hear all the music yet, and 
I do want to get a lot more recordings out. And when we have so many that we're writing together at the moment, it's it's wicked. So you just got done playing with Slash. You got some dates coming up with Deep Purple, who just finally got another nomination for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, what's your thoughts on on, on getting the open up for Deep Purple at a couple of dates coming up? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. I think like it's hard to to think about when we got the the dates offered. We're currently on tour. And we're on just US tour, and it's it's surreal because uh, we were still kind of getting heads around this game, and I think. We'll probably fully come to terms with it. It's like the same with the US leg. We'll probably come to terms with it once it's over and be like, we were we were just with Deep Purple. Who I mean, I grew up on that. My dad, once again, yeah, he's he's into that you know, the classic rock music as well. So to support a band like that is incredible for us and such a wicked opportunity. And we're we're excited for it. Everyone buzz for it. And I think once we get through this tour, because we fly back on the thirtieth. And we get in on the 31st, and then we drive down. It's important now we drive down to Marseille, uh, the south of France, and then we do the show. So we're it's kind of nonstop right now until the 5th of November, and it's it's going to be incredible. I, I like playing France as well. The French audiences are a lot of fun too. So it'll be wicked to be supporting such you know an iconic band. It's going to be incredible. Sounds like you got a lot of touring lined up for the rest of this year and into the new year. Where can people find out about Raven Eye? I mean, where can we get the, the EP at? You're going to have it at some of the shows, or you can go online and get it. Where's the best place to get it? Yeah, like if you go onto iTunes uh, or Spotify, it's, it's all on there, as well as Amazon. And like, if anyone wants to stay late to it, we, we rule our social media. We're always on it. Like We're on our social media more than we talk to each other at the moment. So <laughs> we always say to if you just type forward slash it's Raven Eye, we're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram with that handle. And yeah, we're we're all over it. We love people to come and say hello, and we built up. We like to build up our own family through that, and it's yeah, it's wicked. All right, uh, one more important question before I let you introduce uh, one of the songs off the latest EP, "Breaking Out." Uh, spinal Tap moment. You're on the road so much, you got to have some Spinal Tap moments for us. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the all all Spinal Tap moments we've had. I think we play one gig. I won't name won't name the venue, but we've definitely had one gig when we did the uh, the UK. We played one venue where no one liked us. <laughs> we played the full show, but no one liked us. It's a very awkward moment. Of like, do we just stop, or should we, should we just should we just stop now? And we carried on. Like, eventually, when there was no encore, we're like, yeah, we definitely no one liked what we just did. And yeah, I think it was. The wrong, the wrong mix for us, the wrong crowd for us when we played it, but that was definitely an incredibly awkward moment for us as a band. Well, did, <laughs> did you did you play like the were you the opening slot or were you later in the night? We were um, we were it was we were playing the opening slot. Uh, like, we were playing the opening slot for the, the night, but it was I think it just was the wrong kind of event. Like I didn't say too much just in case they, <laughs> the place finds out. But yeah, it was definitely it, it was surreal. Like I've never. I've, <laughs> You know, it's what's cool about the blues gigs that everyone's kind of up for blues, but if you play the wrong venue as a rock band, like people, it was such like a, what's that, the tumbleweed moment where everyone just, <laughs> <laughs> we walked off stage just dumbfounded. We all looked at other like, did, you know, look at each other, trying to, you know, make sure we feel okay. Like, did you do something wrong? Or did, did I say something wrong? Because <laughs> everyone hated us. So it was incredible, incredible moment. <laughs> Well, I want to say thanks for sharing that with us, and thanks for taking the time out to talk with us here on Hard Rockology. And uh, I want to congratulate you. It's a great five-track EP, so let the guys in the band know. It's Thank it's you. great, and, and we're looking forward to hearing what you guys have coming out uh, later this year, into next year. So like we do with all of our guests, why don't you go ahead and introduce another track off of your EP, Breaking Out. Wicked. Well, I'll introduce a song that I was talking about that I've been loving playing here and it has a good feeling about it and the song is called Hey Hey Yeah. <laughs> 